Welcome back everyone, Dr. Naveen here from UPSC Medico. In this video, I will be discussing the latest guidelines for management of bronchial asthma. So, asthma can present in an acute attack. So, acute exacerbation of asthma. So, we have a separate video on acute exacerbation of asthma okay, in our course curriculum. Asthma can also be chronic, okay, insidious, it is seasonal. So, for long term management of asthma, the guidelines have changed. Okay, long term management of asthma guidelines have changed. I could see in the uh, test series most of the UPSC aspirants who are preparing for medical sciences optional, they are giving GINA 2016 guidelines which have been taken as reference in 20th edition of Harrison. Okay. I think even in our course also in the regular video, I did cover this 20th edition Harrison guidelines. But since then a lot of things changed and now currently we have GINA 2023 guidelines which are latest. Okay, As I told you, you need updated information on all the chronic diseases management for this competitive exam and we always strive to do that. So in this video, I will discuss the long term management of bronchial asthma as per GINA 2023 guidelines. Right. So, in our older videos in the course curriculum, we already discussed about how asthma is managed in the long term. So, it is done in a stepwise fashion. Let's do a quick recap of how it is done. In stepwise fashion of treatment of bronchial asthma, the reliever, okay, the reliever or rescue inhaler, what we use is asthalin or saba. Astelin or Saba. The problem with this Astelin or Saba usage without using inhaled corticosteroids. We all know a bronchodilator is a bronchodilator. It will offer only symptomatic relief. It will never control the inflammation and it will never prevent the future exacerbations. Till now it's okay. But actually in the long studies it was found out that Saba will exacerbate attacks. That means it increases the total number of attacks that can be seen in an asthmatic. So, on the long run, it is not good for the health of the asthmatic patient. So, that's the reason as you could see the GINA recommends or the GINA do not recommend SABA alone in adults, adolescents and children of age 6 to 11 years. Any age group, any pediatric age group of age less than 6 years, the older guidelines, they are still valid. Okay, old guidelines are still valid. But 6 years till the adult stage, now, GINA do not recommend SABA alone as a reliever treatment. So whenever if you are using SABA, add inhaled corticosteroid or, or it is better not to use SABA at all unless it is necessary for acute exacerbations. Better to use even for exacerbations. The latest thing is low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus LABA, long acting. Long acting but not all the LABAs, the only one LABA which is proven helpful in control of or in relieving of the symptoms is low dose ICS plus formiterol. Formiterol is also a long acting bronchodilator but only formiterol. ICS plus formiterol. The one take home from this, this discussion or this video is whenever you see an asthmatic who is well controlled, if he comes with one attack, if it is not very severe, if it is very severe, we admit patient, we give inhalation of uh, salbutamol and we follow all the steps which we discuss in acute severe asthma. I am only talking about one attack of exacerbation in a season. So when you see such a patient, now don't give astalin inhaler. Give him a combination inhaler of ICS plus formiterol. If ICS formiterol is not available, if the patient is asking you to give Saba only, then advise him to use SABA plus ICS together. So the one thing which I told you, track one, that is patient if, if treatment is available. You can go for ICS plus formiterol as reliever. Okay, as reliever. Track two, patient is well controlled on SABA. He doesn't want to change. Then add low dose ICS to it. Low dose ICS. So the preferred is this. The alternate is this. So now we don't have steps. We do have steps of treatment. Within the steps, we have multiple tracks, both track one and track two, right? So the latest update, one first, first and foremost is GINA do not recommend SABA alone. Better to go for the tracks based on the choice of reliever. You have track one that is low dose formiterol and you also have a track two that is SABA or ICS SABA.
these are the two things next there is a new terminology or you have a new categories of asthma medication new terminology or new categories of asthma medication now we have as needed therapy reliever therapy or rescue therapy and we have a long term maintenance therapy or controller therapy and on top of that we have add on therapies we'll go to that but let me finish off the step wise fashion which we used to use in older scripts or older discussion what is that we used to start with mild intermittent persistent moderate persistent severe persistent and very severe persistent disease in that overall for reliever we used to use saba now we are not doing that okay we have step 1 2 3 4 5 in step 2 we use ics low dose but now we are doing ics plus formiterol in low dose okay in step 3 we do maintenance maintenance laba plus ics in step 4 the same thing in step 5 also the same thing okay when you look at the different tracks you will understand the difference so the key difference between older guidelines and the latest guidelines is this so saba alone is not used so before getting into track 1 and track 2 so what are the categories of asthma medication we have controller medications which can control the disease which is anti inflammatory reliever like we have low dose ics formiterol because steroid is there it is a controller we also have other treatment called mart that is maintenance and reliever therapy okay so in this in this the difference between aar and mart is in anti inflammatory reliever whenever it is needed whenever there is an acute attack we give it in maintenance therapy or mart or maintenance and reliever therapy we give daily ics for formiterol this is the key difference now reliever medications are saba alone which is not recommended we have to go for icc ics saba ics formiterol ics saba is track 2 ics formiterol is track 1 okay so this is for as needed quick relief of asthma of symptom we have third category add on therapy which we use it in step 5 step 5 of the treatment of asthma we use this add on therapies among this add on therapies we have lamas ltrs low dose azithromycin low dose oral corticosteroids and biologics like omalizumab one frequently monoclonal antibody against ige which is frequently asked in the mcq exams so these are add on therapies so leukotriene receptor antagonists these are things and these are anticholinergic drugs so they can also be added as an add on therapy so the three categories of asthma medication are you have controller medications reliever medications and add on therapies so what is new again the new stuff is the gina 2023 you have two tracks which is the preferred track the track 1 is preferred in the track 1 we have five steps the key take home is one two steps are clubbed together because the treatment is same step 1 and step 2 are clubbed together when do we use step 1 or step 2 treatment whenever the patient has symptoms which are less than 4 to 5 days per week and there is no nocturnal symptoms if the symptoms are for more than 4 to 5 days a week or symptoms are present for most of the days plus along with that if you see nocturnal symptoms at least once a week then we go for step 3 so what is your take home now first look at the symptoms if the patient is having less than 4 to 5 days a week the symptoms then go for step 1 or step 2 so what is step 1 and step 2 we give as needed that is whenever needed it is not maintenance only when there is an attack when only when patient needs symptomatic relief go with low dose ics plus formiterol that's it low dose ics as needed only these terms are important as needed only low dose ics plus formiterol right in step 3 what we do is if there is nocturnal symptoms or if the symptoms are present most of the days as needed only will not work so then you have to go for maintenance treatment so maintenance low dose ics formiterol daily he will be taking ics formiterol and inhaler in step 4 when do you need to upgrade to step 4 yes the patient is having symptoms most of the days yes there are nocturnal symptoms plus on examination on spirometry or peak expiratory flow rate indicates that the lung function is deteriorating so in that step you have to go for instead of low dose maintenance we have to go for medium dose maintenance and if the same patient has some acute attacks okay uncontrolled severe asthma then even you can start short course oral corticosteroids oral corticosteroids should always be given in short course because in the long term they cause lot of side effects we all know that right you can add them if the asthma is still uncontrolled even after doing all these steps if it is still uncontrolled then we can go for high dose ics formiterol or you can even add anticholinergics or you can even go for biological therapy 
if step four if doing all these things if it is not controlled then go for step five so step five therapy is still valid but the drugs changed and also step one and step two are clubbed together and now we have a track one and what is the most key development here the reliever we use whenever there is symptoms in step three four five whenever there is an acute attack you have to still use low dose ics formiterol as reliever instead of saba if you cannot highlight this in the answers you are not going to get big good marks in track 2 is an alternative when do you use track 2 let's say there is a patient x who is not willing to change or shift from salbutamol to ics formiterol and the same patient is uh, like there's no availability of these drugs in or the patient is well controlled for almost one year with salbutamol itself then in those cases you do go for an alternative so the alternative reliever is you can give as needed saba or you can give ics saba which is more ideal so the patient will take as needed saba so whenever saba is taken in step one also advise him to take ics so what is step one here symptoms less than twice per month step two is symptoms more than twice per month but less than four to five days per week these step one and step two are clubbed together in track one so they are individual and track two but clubbed together in track one so in step one that is symptoms more than twice per month four to five days per week less than four to five days per week in this scenario we go for low dose maintenance inhaled corticosteroids not ics plus formiterol only low dose maintenance ics is given and as needed saba is given if the symptoms are present for most of the days and also nocturnal symptoms this step 3 is similar to step 3 of track 1 so you have to go for low dose maintenance ics plus laba laba can be anything here we are using formiterol there are other 3 4 drugs which comes under long acting bronchodilators so you can start with ics laba maintenance low dose that can be made into medium dose maintenance ics laba plus short course ocs whenever we jump to step 4 that is symptoms present most of the days nocturnal symptoms present plus lung function is deteriorating if it is uncontrolled in step 4 then you go for high dose ics laba it cannot it can not only be formiterol you can use any laba add on anticholinergics can be used and add on biological therapies can be used so the problem with this track 2 is whenever you advise patient to take saba plus ics the adherence with inhaled corticosteroids in community is poor so that's the reason it increases the chances of frequent exacerbations so the preferred is always track one so this is the latest development with gina 2023 so this will be added as an additional video to the older video wherein we did discuss the etiology pathogenesis uh, the clinical features the investigations part of chronic asthma which doesn't change even the acute exacerbation of asthma control is also similar only changes the long-term management wherein we have two tracks under gina 2023